Not real. No, I mean, um, I think I had the confidence with Luca um, that he he handles these things with such grace, and I think that goes for his material that's sexually provocative and never feels voyeuristic or you know um, salacious. And I think it goes for his work in the horror genre, whether it's Bones and All or Suspiria. Certainly, you have moments that are jarring and uh, intense, both in reading the script and in the execution of the movie, but. Um, I think we've all watched things that feel like overkill, and Luke is not that kind of director at all. You're very sticky. It's kind of, um, uh, you, I don't know, you get stuck to things. I don't, but <laughs> I'm just thinking about my experience being in blood. It's kind of funny in a way. It feels... It feels funny to be covered in blood around a bunch of people who are looking at you like, uh, I don't know, who are clean and, and who look good and you look like Feel a comfortable. mess. Yeah. Also, Taylor, uh, Luca was Taylor's personal uh, special effects artist. He would spray blood on her directly even yeah. though he didn't even have to. So, <laughs> it was... Uh, With a smile on his face, yeah. spraying blood on me. And I would just be there watching. <laughs> I think for me it was a feeling of being an outsider, um, and uh, I can relate that to a lot of things in life, but uh, most immediately in that period, because of the COVID isolation and all the rules, just feeling like I was getting by on the stories I was telling myself about where I was in relation to the world, like a lot of people were. Um, not in some vain context, but just, you know, what, what is this morning, <laughs> what is this afternoon? And these characters, especially Lee, appealed to me because I felt like that, as opposed to the privilege of my life and that experience coming from other things or a lockdown or something, that was his actual reality and that was his uh, forever reality. And I thought it was beautiful that he would find himself and find a truth in himself through the, through the gaze of another person, through the love of another person. And I also liked that it didn't deal with that hypothesis like very cheesy that he would necessarily be healed by that love. It's healing in some ways, but as Lucas said yesterday, it's also uh, being in love and the experience of love can be full of pain. And uh, I love how that's captured in the story and the cannibalism is a metaphor for that. So I don't want people to think we're nuts when we say that this is relatable because uh, hopefully it's not in that way. <laughs> but in, uh, in the greater metaphor, I think it's relatable to everyone. I relate to what he said and thinking about being an outsider, especially the younger version of me, um, who I feel like I, you know, got to honor in this movie in a way, um, uh, who kind of felt like displaced most of the time and that I didn't belong. And, and I think probably a lot of teenagers feel that way. Um, so it felt, you know, really cathartic and beautiful to kind of go back there uh, from the perspective where I am now <laughs> as having a lot of wonderful people in my life and feeling very, uh, you know, held in my community. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, th that's beautiful. And, and the love in this movie is so special in the way that all, it felt like I kind of was gaining all these incredible people in my life at the same time as uh, working on something that felt really impactful and meaningful. So, I don't know, that doesn't really answer your question, but that's where my mind went. 